Hello, Dominance and Submissive. I'm Master Zon from Ontario, and today is lecture number 19, Code of Conduct Within the Dominant Submissive Lifestyle. Now, this lecture is actually taken from my book, The DS Code. The DS Code is a book on interaction within the lifestyle, either at a house, a club, an event, or between doms, or doms and other subs, or any kind of pairing like that. It's not that it can't help those in a home dynamic. It's just that it's more for those who are out and active in the community. So every lesson that is in the book can be applied to a home dynamic to help make it a bit better. Now, in the dominant submissive lifestyle, a dom or sub considers it foremost important to keep their submissive or their dominant in mind as well as their position in the lifestyle. As long as you keep your submissive and dominant in mind, you have a good base for fulfilling the duties of a lifestyle dynamic. Also, keeping your submissive or dominant in mind and trying to do better for them helps with personal growth. If you just say, what I'm doing is good enough, something might end up happening. Be it an injury, failing to perform for a dom, or failing to attend to the needs of a submissive or treating them thoughtlessly. But if you think of it as the life you have now can be that much better tomorrow, then when you take orders from a dominant or look upon your submissive, you get the feeling that as great as things are, it can still be that little bit better. So you can't fail your dom or fail to attend to the needs of your submissive. That's why I say as long as you keep your partner in mind, you'll end up fulfilling the duties of the lifestyle. Now, the education of a master or mistress. Masters and mistresses stand in a position above other doms in the lifestyle. They should present themselves as a professional dominant because that's how the title that they're using has them being seen. Not every dominant has a claim on the title master or mistress. It's a title that's earned through knowledge, experience and or training of a person. So doms need to gain extensive knowledge and understanding of the principles of BDSM in a general way. For example, I have one slave, my slave wife Six, but other people call me master, master Zon, even though I'm not their direct master. It's a term of respect for my education and training in the field. Now, a master or mistress doesn't necessarily need to be a scholar or a college or university graduate, but does need to understand the craft of BDSM as much as a person in a field would have a bachelor degree or better. It's on the dom to study to try to keep their submissive state and to grow and evolve the dynamic. It's also on the dom to try to get their submissive to study and to encourage them and to teach them the things that they learn as they go. Now, for principles of the dominant submissive lifestyle, by principles, I mean principles of conduct, not ethical or moral foundation principles of an individual. For the kind I mean, there are two types of principles in the lifestyle. Every day, an emergency, and they vary for the level of protocol that they have. Everyday principles include things like set protocols, understanding of BDSM and kink, and the parts of the dominant submissive lifestyle, as well as the tools of a dom. Both dominant and submissive and submissive should understand every part of both roles. Keeping clean, being polite, dressing formally according to season and circumstance are all parts of everyday principles of the dominant submissive lifestyle. When you deal with guests, you treat them courteously and according to their post while avoiding pointless banter. When having food or drink, you're sure to not be slovenly or to overindulge, especially when in public. When you find yourself with downtime, you don't lounge around. You use that time to read, train, talk with your peers to learn new things. These are the ways that a dominant and submissive help to uphold the ideals and principles that the BDSM lifestyle actually strives for. 
Now, for emergency principles, it's easy to maintain your composure when everything is going good, but it gets harder during stressful times or times of emergency. During an emergency, which there are too many different types to possibly try to list, it's time to drop the level of protocol and dynamics as well as putting aside the built-in agreements that might be in a DS contract to suit the emergency. So planning for different possible emergencies, making rules and protocols and ways to govern them and act when they do come up helps avoid panic and keep your composure as well as maintain the look and image of your post for any of those who might be around. Not forgetting your post. For dominant and submissive, it's important to keep the spirit of BDSM in mind 24-7. Whether walking, standing, sitting, or eating, never forget it. BDSM customs are different than those of the area that they might be in. And it may even seem outdated at times. But it's up to dominant and submissives to hold themselves to a higher standard even than those in the community around them might. To be worthy of one another, to be worthy of those in the community, those who would give their time to hear you out or to help try to teach you, to show proper respect and use proper etiquette at all times, to show they are worthy of being a dominant or submissive, but also to keep up appearances and a public face for any places that they might be associated with. If it's known that a person associates with one particular BDSM club and they go out and they get arrested for abuse of their partner, this doesn't look good on the house. It makes the rest of those inside look as though they might be abusers. For a public face, it does not present a good image to anyone within the lifestyle. Now, I've had a number of years of personal study as well as training. And the biggest thing that I've ever learned is if you can keep up the appearance of having proper manners and proper etiquette, then people don't end up looking down on you. Those who find out about my lifestyle, as open as I might be, we don't just announce it to everybody, always say, really? You seem like the nicest, nicest sweetest, most normal couple that I can imagine. We tell them we are. We're also just extremely kinky. And it's because I've always presented the proper etiquette and social graces of 18th century France, let's just say, that people don't see me that way. Even when they find out, they know that I'm not an abuser. When I first started putting pictures of Six's collars up, especially the locking ones, people went, this is so cute. It might seem odd to some people, but because I know you, I think it's just adorable. Now, the one last thing that I want to leave you with is that no matter your dynamic, be it a private in-home dynamic, a bedroom dynamic, or one where you're active in the community, keeping your submissive or your dominant in mind and showing them the proper respect at all times is key to the BDSM lifestyle. Consent is the main thing that separates a BDSM couple from an abused couple. Please keep this in mind when you're practicing BDSM or any type of kink, be it a Gorn lifestyle, suspension fetishes, anything, whether you consider it BDSM or not. Keep the safety of your partner in mind and keep the personal feeling of your partner in mind. Our slaves and submissives are still people and need our protection, love, and support. Thank you all for joining me. I'm Master Zahn. Please join me next time.